Hi everyone, Lord Crew here and welcome to my channel. So the topic for today is about uh, war meta for weekend rank week 132. So without further ado guys, uh, let's proceed. So first thing, we're going to show you the war uh, status on the gods matchup. And as you can notice, guys, war currently on the on the uh, second to the lowest win rate uh, compared with its uh, number one head-to-head -head, uh, opponent death, especially the board wipe deck. As you notice, both, uh, death is currently the highest total win rate. And now war are currently now on second bottom. Uh, if you notice for the past couple of months, uh, war usually on the positive side or like above fifty percent total win rate. And but now he's like the second, uh, second, uh, second uh, total win rate. And if you notice, war is also the second most popular. Uh, currently, nature is the most popular, followed by war. But the win rate of nature has higher. It's like fifty point seven. And uh, war is forty nine point seven with win. Now, what what's the reason why suddenly war became now uh having a lowest win rate? Uh, there are like uh two factors here. There are lots of uh, nerf happen recently for the past couple of months and weeks. Especially last week, there was like another nerf for war, especially for the Orkish elite who are like from three five uh, from three six now became three five in uh, stats. So it affects also uh, the win rate of war there. And if we compare with the archetype, like uh, look deeper now on the war's uh, archetype. Uh, as you can uh, see here, uh, board wipe deck is still the number one. He has like 67% win rate. And war is like the third overall, which he has like a 58.3% uh, win rate. So control war has a... Uh, one of the solid deck uh, archetype here with the highest win rate but unfortunately they're only like five percent player five percent player and if we go uh, 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 look for the entire war uh, archetype there are like four archetype uh, they are like uh, literally uh, control war mid-range and uh, uh, frenzy aggro and aggro and as you can notice both the aggro archetype like frenzied and a uh, aggro war there only has like below 50 percent so i believe the aggro war pull down the win rate of the war total all even though control war and mid-range war has like a highest win rate compared with the nature okay there so as you can see uh based on the stats here and if we compare uh the control war uh he has like a lowest uh win rate versus board wipe deck and that's like literally uh uh it means like it's a bad matchup if you if you're a control war or mid-range war facing a board wipe deck and that's the main reason why uh, if you notice if we go for the overall uh, board wipe has one of the dominant deck here and if you notice also like board wipe deck has a low win rate with aggro light but there was also a nerf on the light uh, meta where the Regent Dawn is nerf uh, instead of plus one plus two it became now plus one plus one so technically the board wipe will have like more uh, became a, a stable meta or like a highest win rate because if you check uh, if we go back to the cheer uh, like the gods uh, matchup light now became one of the lowest playable and the lowest win rate and if we compare that with the uh, war that's supposed to be our like uh, additional win 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 percentage if we match up with light but technically because there's like low people playing light means uh uh, your uh, chances of fighting a light will less. It means no no win uh, condition for you, like uh, minus the win additional win percentage. Okay, and that's like uh, another factor out why war are becoming like uh, uh, sinking down to the total win rate, especially for the aggro. Now next we're gonna go for the uh, net decking. So currently uh, on the top twenty uh, weekend rank, there are only like six players who enter the top 20 if we compare that to last week there are like more than a uh, temp uh, there are like 10 people who enter the uh, top 20 using war uh, majority are control war and now it's only six uh, the dominant deck currently on this weekend rank are board wipe deck because there are like seven players who enter the top 20 using board wipe so it literally uh uh outshine uh the war here by the death 
And as you can uh, see, last week, the, the top dominant deck are War. Now, uh, the top dominant for this weekend rank are the are the are the death now especially the board wide deck so if we uh the good the good news there guys is like mochi mochi uh is a control war he is currently the number one so the number one spot went to control war and he managed to get a perfect score 25 out of 25 and there are like other two more uh war uh uh are in the top 10 so that will be on the rank 7 and rank 9 so rank 7 unknown player and rank 9 annihilator are using also war and then on rank uh, on rank 7 uh, 20 rank 20 and 11 and 12 11 and 12 uh, unknown and x vex and 20 8 m vest are also a war here so if we're gonna check the tech cards that they use or virus type of uh, uh, control Control War and Midrange War. So as you can see, uh, Mochi Mochi managed to end, get a perfect score. And as you can see, he has no Demogorgon here. But he replaced it with Polyhemia and Avatar. So literally, he's taking up with the end game. His win condition and end game are a lot because of Polyhemia and Avatar. Uh, uh, the main reason why it's called, it's called Control War because as long as you have like more than 2-7 uh, casting costs, you are considered a control war. If you have like seven, two, seven castings and below or none, then you're considered a mid-range control. So this is like his art. He still has like uh the traditional uh a build for the control war, like the like the Auto Misery, Leviathan, Iron Two Pyramid, Master Technician. So he has like one master technician, uh, one endurance shield, one viking, and he has like taking up with a lot of uh, seven casting costs. Uh his, he has one tech card here, Spiral Go Golem. Instead of here, Tacos. So, Fire Gone, the good thing is like he can attack. It's like a Blitz, but he has like uh, as a, a, uh, he has like a, uh, a higher health and higher uh, uh, strength here. So, imagine he can attack any uh, ordered creature or even hidden. So, that's the good thing about this Spiral Golem, uh, which is majority uh, the difficult part for War is to attack order and attack hidden creature especially if you're just relying on creature and weapon for your uh a board control here and i think uh like i compared if we check the uh, war here uh technically if he managed to uh encounter a board wipe he has like a low win rate so how come he managed to get a perfect score uh, i tried to check his uh history uh on his controller he never good for him he never managed to encounter a board wipe deck and that's the main reason why he got a perfect score but if in case he managed to get fight one who knows he might have a chance still of a winning versus board wipe because he has like uh two more uh uh an end game creature like polyhemia and avatar okay so he might still have like opportunity to win uh versus a board wipe deck and that's like a, a good about his build okay so next, uh, next one will be a mid range by uh by unknown player that's currently rank seven. So this is a mid range. It's mid range because it only has like two seven casting costs. Um, if you have like three seven casting costs, you're considered already mid range. Okay, and he uh, the good thing about this one, it's a little bit cheaper because the good thing about mid range, a little bit cheaper, and as you can notice, it's zero point four eight compared with a uh a control one by the number one is point nine. Uh, he still has like an expensive card like Pyramid Warden and Master Tactician, but the rest are like a cheaper, uh, cheaper card. He does not have like a Magic Missile He's using Blade of Sticks like me, and he still have some same of the tech cards as a mid range. So, uh, I have like a, a cheaper version of this one. So check out uh, my other uh, YouTube video. It's zero point zero seven at it's super cheaper. Uh, I replaced Master Tactician and Pyramid Warden with other tech cards, uh, other cards that are cheaper. So, but the, the play style are like the same. Uh, I like his build. It's a cheaper version, no Demogorgon. And that's the main reason why people has like a mid-range variation because of the expensiveness of the Demogorgon. But like I mentioned, the, uh, the number rank one, he has no Demogorgon. He's taking up with other uh, expensive card like Avatar. And polyhemia so the next one will be rank 9 uh, the rank 9 is also a mid-range so there are like two I uh, know uh, rank 9 not mid-range but control war 
Annihilator. So this one is like a traditional control war with uh, two Demogorgon, Hector, and Strength in Numbers. Some players replace Strength in Numbers with Avatar of War, but he prefers Strength in Numbers. And he has like Aeneas, Hirtakus, Expensive One, Magic Missile. So this is like a traditional one. Uh, traditional. So one thing that I noticed on his uh, deck buildup, he replaced the Raid Reveler. Usually there's like a, a, uh, a Longship Viking. Uh, Longship Viking was replaced the Archangel Bruiser. Before Archangel Bruiser was famous because of the nerf, it became a five, five strength and two health. It was replaced now by a Viking Longship. Now the Viking Longship has been replaced now with Raid Reveler here. So that's the the difference here. And as you can notice, there's no also there's no Orkish Elite. The Orkish Elite has been replaced by the Guild Enforcer here. So that's like the difference on this uh, control war, even though it's like almost traditional. No Viking longship on forecasting cost, uh, and no guild and uh, no Orkish Elite and replaced by a guild enforcer for the turn five. But he still has Ravenous Chimera and a card. I think the main reason why that's okay because there's no more light. Uh, no more light. Usually you need Blitz when your versus light, but because lights are less now, I think you're not worried that just like as a guild enforcer probably good versus for zombies uh next uh the next one will be on the rank 11 and 12 so 11 and 12 are still also a, a war uh the first one is by anon player control war demogorgon here uh he still has orcish elite and viking longship uh almost this is like a traditional one uh the, the traditional uh uh control war uh, same like with the old, uh, like for the past couple of days here. So same build, nothing changed. Uh, no raid re reveler here. Uh, still has massive execution pyramid. Demogorgon, Hector, like four seven casting costs. Soul survivor and dual carnage sweep here. So for the mid range one, as you can see, this is like one point eight at the mid range one is zero point four at cheaper. Uh, cheaper version but still a little bit expensive because it has like master tactician and pyramid warden and instead of using standing numbers you use tenderizer here tenderizer are a big source of damage uh this is blitz means if he attacks he can attack creature but for the next two two turn he can attack god directly means that's a total of 18 damage eight damage per turn so this is like so he does not have magic missile and that's make it also a little bit cheaper. His blade of sticks, and this is like a good build. He still has the Orkish Elite, Ravenous, and two Red uh, Reveler. So the Demogorgon replaced by Red Reveler here, and still using the same time. So this is like a good uh, mid range cheaper version here. Okay, and then uh, and the last one will be by uh, 8M West. So this is like a control war. Uh, still with Demogorgon, Dual Strength. This is like a, a updated version. Uh, last week, Clutch managed to get the, ra the rank 1. Uh, he's using 2 reinforcement here. Uh, but for 8M, he's just using 1. And he has like a 2 Raid Reveler here. Even though he has already a Master Tactician here. Uh, 1 Viking. He removed the Orkish Elite here, guys. Uh, he removed the Orkish Elite but replaced it with Guild Enforcer. So... Maybe uh, for the upcoming control war, uh, we will see a variation where people play more a guild enforcer and raid reveler here, even though they have like a master tactician. One soul survivor and still doer carnage sweep. Uh, he has the magic missile, why it's a little bit expensive. Okay. So now for the bonus uh, archetype, guys, we all know uh, aggro are like uh, the cheap, uh, like the lowest win rate. Why the reason why the uh, war win rate went down? But I I managed to found out a a good uh, frenzy aggro with a, a good win rate. As you can see, 55, uh, 75 percent win rate. And if you notice, uh, this is a little bit uh, expensive because of the skites, skites of harvest. And uh, as you can notice, that's the only expensive card here, but uh, majority are like uh, a good cards here. Um, uh, pyramid also uh, uh, expensive. So the expensive card are Skite and Pyramid Warden. He's using Sharpen. Uh, same with the Frenzy cards like the uh, Thunder Color, Archangel Bruiser, and Balkas Campaign. And that's the main reason why it's called uh, Frenzy Aggro. 
Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, kindly please subscribe and like. And if you have like question or suggestion, kindly please leave me a comment. And see you next time. And thank you for watching. There's a distance between us.